Hey everybody, Ryan with Vortex Optics here, coming to you with another live event today. We've got a really fun one. Today we are going to talk about picking and choosing the right rings and mounts for your rifle. I will tell you as a, a tech service person here at Vortex, this is one of the most common questions we get asked. Um, there is no universal solution or, or application here that necessarily fits, but We've been through a lot of it. We're going to help you pick them out today based on a couple of the more common rifle platforms that we might run into today. Um, so a lot of variables that come into this. Configuration of rifle, the type of optic we're using, the type of shooting we'll be doing. Any number of things can, can add up um, you know, to an equation on how to pick out the right rings and mounts. Um, for your average hunter, usually you can get by with uh, you know, a traditional set of rings on like a weaver style base. Uh, that we would find commonly sold at your, at your local sporting goods store. For your guys who are getting into long range and precision stuff, occasionally we'll have to get into something a little bit more technical, uh, and we'll get into that a little bit today too. Um, we have a lot of information to go over today, and if you guys have any questions at any point in time on what works, what we use, or why, don't hesitate to shout them out. Uh, we're going to jump right into it, I guess. Right, right off the bat, one of the, one of the most popular things that we see uh, today here at Vortex is AR-15s or modular sporting rifles, whatever you want to call them. Um, and we get a lot of requests for a lot of different optics to put on them. With a traditional style rifle scope or a tactical scope or anything in the, I guess, the standard form that you see here before us, a lot of times we're going to utilize what we call a cantilever type mount on top of a rifle like this. And, and there's a very specific reason for it. Um, looking at a more traditional rifle, let's say a Remington 700 in a regular stock, we can see that over the top of the receiver to the buttstock on the portion we'll call the comb, it's considerably lower than the receiver or the action itself. On something like this AR-15 here, modular sporting rifle, we'll see that this and the optics platform are actually on the same level. So we have to come up with a mount that's going to position the optic up high enough so that when you, the shooter, get behind it, you're not having to smash your head down into the stock or crane it way up and be in an unnatural position. So enter the cantilever mount. Um, these mounts, there's a variety of them out there. We offer several, uh, usually very simple to install. Um, and a lot of times it will allow you to quickly remove your optic if necessary um, or not. Sometimes we just strong mount them on there. And uh, they are a fantastic solution for putting any kind of variable powered rifle scope onto your modular sporting rifle, AR-15 or something similar. Um, most of them attach with two rings and then a, a single uni base. Um, again, very easy to install and, and very easy to use. They're attractive and they're extremely functional. Um, like I said, the biggest thing here with the modular sporting rifles or, or uh, AR-15s is putting that optic at the right height for your eye when you look through there, uh, giving you a comfortable cheek weld, which brings up kind of another question that some folks might have. People, uh, maybe a misconception even, people often will talk about uh, optic over bore height and how critical is it? Well, we can see here in the case of this modular sporting rifle that if we looked at where the center of the optic is relative to the center of the bore, it's pretty high. It's about two and a half inches and sometimes even more depending on the mount that you're using. And so folks will call up and they'll say, well, you know, is that going to complicate my long range accuracy? Is that going to affect how my rifle is going to perform? And in the big picture, not tremendously. If we really wanted to get nitpicky and start looking at certain things, Yes, we could make an argument either way. We want your optic as close to the bore as possible. But for the majority of what we're all doing here at Vortex and what you out there in the Vortex Nation are up to, this is the best solution for this. We'll have ample clearance. We'll be able to put flip covers on. Most importantly, when you get behind this kind of rifle with this kind of mount, you'll be comfortable. Um, we can get into torque poundages and values sometime. If you want to ask them here today, that's, that's great too. And, and we might save that for another video too, uh, another live event coming up in another two or so weeks. Um, I've got a question here. Uh, question for KJ Hughes. Do you have any QD cantilever scope mounts? Good question. Do we have QD cantilever? We do. Yep. We've always kind of had a few here at Vortex, and, and sometimes the models will change subtly. Um, we've got this new one here. This is our CM404 quick release mount. It's a two lever uh, quick release with a, what we call a horizontally split or a traditionally split ring. Um, great little piece, T25 Torx up top. It has adjustable tension as well, so we can, actually, uh, we can actually modify the cam tension that we'll put on the Picatinny rail, which is really quite useful. If you've got a, a receiver or a rail um, or a receiver or otherwise, then maybe on the high side or the low side of the spec, depending, 
having the ability to adjust the cam tension is pretty critical to accuracy and repeatability if you remove the mount in the optic and then put it back on. Um, great piece, uh, available now. Hop on our website, vortexoptics.com. You can find the CM404 on there. So back to this here, we're going to move away from this, uh, this modular sporting rifle and maybe look at a different weapons platform uh, to give you an idea of how ring height variances come into play. We've got a Ruger American Predator here, chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, and we've got a Razor HD 5-20 to Generation 1 mounted on it. A uh, couple of great things about this unit. Um, out of the box comes with a Picatinny rail, and this is something too that you're going to hear me touch on a bit more in this video as far as uh, a, a really, really functional mounting platform for just about every ring that's out there. If you call up to Vortex and you, you ask us, hey, what do you recommend for X rifle, whatever it may be, most of the time you're going to hear us say Picatinny rail. Um, and we've got a preferred vendor that we like to throw you to. It's EGW Guns. Their website is just egwguns.com. They make more mounts for more different rifles, shotguns, and similar applications out there than anybody else. They're extremely affordable, extremely durable. I probably personally own a dozen of them myself. Um, but their functionality is unquestionable. How simple they are to install, how easy it is to use. Um, in the case of this, these precision match rings will just anchor on there using the two on either ring, the T25 bolts that anchor up. They're very robust, very secure, and actually quite repeatable. If, if you can, you can take the optic off and generally put it back on and get within a reasonable um, uh, you know, distance of your original zero. It's not something I'm going to tell you, hey, take it off, travel to a hunt, put it back on, you're good to go. Um, it's a lot easier, though, than starting from you know, uh, root one, I guess, with, with a different style of ring. Um, again, Picatinny rail on top of most rifle applications, whether it's your favorite hunting rifle, your Ruger 1022, uh, whatever you've got, even shotguns and things like that for, for the guys that are hunting in slug states or turkey hunters, Picatinny rail is almost assuredly the most universal and, and easy to use mounting platform out there, period, to work with the largest variety of rings. Um, if you guys have any questions on that, throw them at me. I'm here for you. Moving on to, oh, go ahead, we've got a question. We've got a question. Cheek rest on the stock. On this Ruger American Predator, this is a Bradley cheek rest. Um, these are pretty neat. We're not going to use up a whole lot of video time talking about them, but they are really cool. Very simple to use. They Velcro in place. They're height adjustable. Um, this one is kind of a special one-off deal. We had the Vortex emblems done on it, but check them out. BradleyCheekRest.com. Outstanding product. We have become a huge fan of these here at Vortex. We're a very simple uh, cheek piece solution, which actually brings up another good question, too about selecting rings and, and the height that they're at. Um, with the MSR earlier, we touched on, you know, what is an appropriate ring height? Is, is scope over bore important? And yes, it is. But again, this comes down to shooter comfort too. Um, getting into some of the, uh, I guess, common technical questions that we'll receive is, hey, you know, I have my rifle scope mounted up, but I'm, I'm seeing that it's not quite fitting me, I'm not able to get behind the optic, I'm not able to utilize the eye box for what it's worth, what's the deal? Is this a, a problem of the scope? And more often than not, it actually comes down to ring height. Um, if the rings are too high, the shooter's having to lift his head up off the stock. Um, if the, shooter, or if the uh, rings are too low, sometimes we'll see the shooter will have to kind of squish their face into it. Either way, not giving you an optimal or a comfortable shooting position to be in, and it can really complicate things. It can adversely affect your shooting experience, accuracy, um, and performance, even in like adverse weather conditions or low light, because we're not directly behind the eye box. So in the case of this Ruger American, we went with the lowest possible rings that we could. Uh, for this rifle scope and this rifle combination. These precision match rings are 0.95 inches uh, to the center from the base height, but you can tell here, again, with this traditionally stocked rifle, that, that that ring height is still a little too high, so we add this cheek piece up here to help make up to it. So if your rings can't go low enough, if when you get behind your gun after setting it up, you find you're not in an optimal shooting position, the addition of a cheek piece, whether it's like this or some of the adhesive ones that are out there, are absolutely you know, a great addition. I think that it's something you should definitely consider. So again, anybody has any questions on the mechanics of a rifle, mounting it up, anything like this, go ahead. Yep? We have a question from Lex. Is the orientation of the cantilever mount important? Lex, is the orientation of the cantilever mount important? Great question. Overall, not really. Um, the idea behind the mount 
I think if we really looked at it would be to simply position the optic at the right height. So whether it's flipped around or not, no. It, it wouldn't really adversely affect how the optic performs, how the rifle performs. But what you will see in the case of like let's say this modular sporting rifle, if I was to put the cantilever the other direction and obviously have the scope the right way, it would really push it back onto the stock. Um, if you had a, a limitation, like let's say you had your cervical vertebrae fused in your neck and you couldn't hunch down onto your rifle, I have actually talked to shooters that, that have done that before. They'll flip their cantilevers around to bring the optic back to them. This is a solution that would work for that particular application. But it, it wouldn't really affect, you know, adversely the performance of the rifle um, or anything like that. Uh, so, no, go with it. If, it. if it's something you need to do, I think it's absolutely fine. Just remember, we want to stay on the receiver, not on the handguard. Let's touch on that real quick, too. A lot of modular sporting rifles, uh, new rifles like the Ruger RPR, which we've got an example of here. You see these continuous rail platforms forward of the receiver. And occasionally we'll have a shooter call up and, and they'll mention, you know, I'm not able to get good groups or the tracking seems to be erratic and things aren't just really working out that great. And after diagnosing and kind of troubleshooting everything, we'll find that we've actually got the cantilever mount or even double ring mounts mounted between the receiver itself and the handguard. And this is a big no-no. Just because this continuous optics platform, well, I shouldn't even call it continuous optics platform, continuous rail platform appears to be one piece, it's actually not, depending on the setup. And in this case, it's not. Um, as you fire your weapon or as you put uh, you know, shoulder pressure into it or preload your bipod or put it on the bags, the handguard itself can shift very subtly uh, from the receiver itself. And, and we can actually now have kind of a, a floating surface here that this rifle scope is trying to, to set on. And it you know, will cause all sorts of problems when you're trying to shoot. So if you've got uh, anything other than a truly monolithic upper receiver um, on your modular sporting rifle or on something like the, the Ruger Precision Rifle, make sure you maintain your mount onto your upper receiver only as opposed to your, you know, uh, your rail platform forward. Uh, so that will ensure the best accuracy. So what if you don't have a Picatinny rail? What if, what if you don't care for the looks? What if you don't care for the style? Or what if your rifle just won't accept it? There's a lot of other options out there. Um, one you'll hear tossed around quite a bit is called a weaver rail or a weaver style rail. Um, this is a pretty old uh, um, methodology of mounting optics up onto it. It's very simple, same premise as a Picatinny rail. It's a cross slot that a bolt goes into and, and the mount will clamp on, or the ring will clamp onto the mount. Um, but it's just a little different style. Uh, we have rings that also work with the Weaver style rails, um, like our Vipers here, uh, 30 millimeter or one inch. Um, and really they work in very much the same way. The Vipers in particular have a thumb screw that, that you can loosen up and a, uh, you know, a clamping part that will go on and actually bite the edge of the mount and a cross bolt that acts somewhat like a recoil lug um, and then to provide additional support. Um, you know, you'll see a lot of traditional hunting rifles with Weaver style rails. Um, and uh, this is a great option here, uh, you know, the Vipers, and certainly there's others out there too. Um, so moving on from there, you might have a rifle that maybe has somewhat of a proprietary setup on it. Uh, here's some examples. Ruger Model 77s use Ruger's very strong integral uh, mounting platforms, and they require a very specific ring. Um, you know, Ruger's ship with a pair of rings, but let's say you want to go to a 30 millimeter rifle scope. What do you do? Our friends over at Leopold make a great 30 millimeter option for the Ruger receiver, that proprietary receiver, as do our friends over at Warren. So in the case of this Ruger number one here, I've got a pair of Warren rings uh, holding my Razor LH to that proprietary uh, quarter rib that Ruger has on their, um, on their number one. So very strong, very robust, very simple means of attachment. If you've got a unique rifle, that has uh, you know, an unusual setup or, or something other than a Weaver, a Picatinny, or any other traditional uh, base setup, there's probably a solution. Give us a holler. We probably monkeyed with it at one point in time. We're happy to direct it to somebody who's got something. So again, anybody has any questions, mounting, uh, what to use, if you've got an off-the-wall rifle that you've got questions on, shout it out. I've, I've probably got a solution. Um, looking at other options too, Sometimes limitations of rifles will cause us to, um, or will require us to use a different kind of ring in order to get the most out of the optic and the rifle combination. Misalignments are not uncommon with rifles. They're mass produced, and a lot of times you'll find if you do you know, select a pair of rings and a mount 
When you put it on that rifle, you may not be able to get zeroed where you want to, or you may have to exhaust a lot of the elevation or windage or just overall travel in order, in order to hit your target. And, and sometimes this isn't caused by necessarily the scope or the ammunition or anything like that, but just the misalignment in the rifle. Um, we can have things like holes drilled and tapped in the receiver, slightly askew. Um, barrels can literally point left, right, fore, aft, who knows. Um, and there's a solution for that too. A, a common, now somewhat antiquated, still pretty popular methodology for mounting an optic up is what we would call a windage adjustable or a standard base. At one point in time, uh, this would have been commonplace on about every rifle that you would find uh, in every scope mount. It uses uh, a dovetailed front base and two, ring, or two uh, large thumb screws in the rear to actually toggle the scope left and right to allow you to zero without having to actually use your windage turrets, which is pretty handy. Um, you'll see a lot of classically stocked rifles and, and kind of older stuff, uh, you know, running that kind of setup because it, it looks good, it's attractive, and it's extremely functional. But if, if you've got a rifle that's maybe not able to zero because of a potential misalignment, that's a really good way to do it, windage adjustable bases. Um, our friends over at Burris also offer a great solution with their, um, uh, their signature series rings, a pair of rings that I use quite a bit. They use what's called a posi line insert. It's actually a, a nylon insert that goes inside of the ring that you can incrementally add five MOA of adjustment up, down, left, or right by simply swapping the little insert. Kind of neat. I've used them on all sorts of rifles, big calibers, small calibers. They work fabulously well. Um, anybody has any questions, give me a holler. Yep, go ahead. We got a question from Steven. Uh, when choosing precision rings, what size rings do you use for a 50 millimeter belt? Great question. Um, again, this is going to be very subjective to the rifle that we're going to be using it on. 50 millimeter objective, very common nowadays in the case of this Ruger uh, American Predator here. We've got a 50 millimeter objective, we've got it in a pair of lows. However, if you were going to mount this same scope on top of, say, a Ruger Precision Rifle, which is a chassis type rig, like this one, with again, a continuous rail platform, those low precision match rings aren't going to cut it. They're just going to be too low. We're going to need to go to a minimum of about a 1.26. And actually, my preference would go to the higher size yet, the 1.45s, or even one of the extended cantilever mounts, like the Viper mount here, um, or the precision quick release, or the precision extended cantilever. Again, in the spirit of making the shooter more comfortable and, and getting behind the eye box of the rifle scope, more so than trying to, to seek out that low um, you know, optic over bore height, go with what fits your rifle and what fits you, the shooter. If you have a stock like the Ruger Precision Rifle with its adjustable cheek piece and you have something with a continuous rail platform on there, you are going to need to go with rings high enough accordingly. So in the case of the Precision Rifle, Go with highs in the case of your you know, favorite non, uh, I guess, continual rail platform rifle. Usually, you can sneak by with lows. Any other questions like that, shoot them my way. Uh, we have a question yeah. from Luca. Which rings do you recommend for 50 BMG? 50 BMG. Um, quality rings uh, is the biggest thing. I, I can't stress that enough. One thing that we have... Uh, seen quite a bit is folks will purchase um, a, a rifle, they'll spend a lot of money on a rifle, they'll spend a lot of money on an optic, and, and then they'll look for um, the least expensive rings we can get by with. And we, we want to encourage you to get the best rings that you can afford, especially for applications like a 50 BMG, but, but don't go to the bottom of the bargain bin and pick those out. This would be like buying a top fuel car and putting on retreads. You're just not going to be happy with the performance. Um, in the case of the 50 BMG, on just about any 50 BMG, they're really not all that bad. Even some of the lighter weight ones from like our friends at Serbu are, are not terribly uncomfortable to shoot. A lightweight 12 gauge firing a slug is probably more violent. Um, on a lot of the 50 BMGs that I've mounted rifle scopes on, I, I prefer the precision match rings for their robustness, their security, uh, and their you know, multi-height systems. We've got a variety of different sizes that fit every 50 BMG out there that I've, I've currently run into. Most of the time, on most of the traditionally stocked or configured 50s, you're going to be running the 126 or the 145s for be it a Barrett, an Armalite, an Anzio, a Serbu, Safety Harbor, whatever you got. So great question. Um, go with something like the precision match ring as a bare minimum. You're firing a 750 grain projectile on top of 400 grains of powder. We want to hold that baby down tight. So any other questions like that, shoot them my way. 
And if not, you know, get to us later on. We'll have uh, Q&A open up on Facebook. Feel free to type in, feel free to write in, feel free to call in. Uh, we'll answer anything we can for you. We're always here for you. Thanks again for coming to another live event. Tune in again in another two weeks. We're going to have another one for you. And uh, hey, thanks again. <laughs>